User-defined types and subtypes in VHDL are a good coding practice that improves the read readability of code without impacting synthesizability in any negative way. So we've already talked about the IEEE library and the standard logic type. The standard logic type and uh, standard logic vector are the default data types that we use with all of our signals and, uh, and ports. And so uh, if you look at the design that we already described, 16-bit adder, you'll find that all of our ports are of the standard logic vector type and all of our signals are of the standard logic uh, vector type. So uh, what's a signal and what's a port? A port is self-explanatory. It's just a port of an entity. It's an, an input, output, or in-out port. A signal is just a node. It's an electrical node in the circuit. It might be significant or it might not. It depends on the connections. Uh, so it's just a, a node in a circuit. It's just, uh, it's not a register. It's important to understand that it's not a register. It's a node. Um, in very long, it's called a wire, which it really is. It's actually just a wire. Now, right here, we are using something called the subtype, which brings us to a, uh, a topic uh, about how to declare user-defined types and subtypes in VHDL. And so VHDL actually allows you to describe your own data type. This data type can be described in terms of other data types, uh, default data types or uh, of data types that have already been uh, de described uh, earlier, as is the case, for example, with the standard logic type, which is de de described in the IEEE library. So there are two uh, types of uh, user-defined types that are really uh, interesting. The first is the enumeration, and this is shown in the first line here. So the keyword type indicates that we are describing a new data type. And this is the name of the new data type. And is indicates that we are going to list the uh, values that this data type can take. And so we have here an enumeration of the values that the data type can take. Oranges, apples, 15, 70, and John. It is just a set of strings that describes the um, uh, kind of values that a signal of this data type can take. Um, so, for example, if we declare a new signal, and let's call it signal uh, A1, of uh, the data type, um, for example, my list, then this new signal can only take one of the values in the brackets. Now, we can declare the signal of type my list as long as we have described the new type my list first. Enumerations, when they are uh, translated into hardware, will not remain as, um, as strings of text. Instead, they will be translated into registers carrying bits. Uh, so for example, here, this enumeration can take one, two, three, four, five values. So we will use three bits to represent any signal of this type. Now, uh, what is the correspondence? Like oranges will become what uh, binary value? This is something that is design, decided by the synthesizer. So uh, why are enumerations useful? When are they useful? They are useful, for example, in state machines. We will see in state machines that when you use a user-defined type to describe the states of your state machine, this makes the data, the code, a lot more readable. The other type, kind of, of uh, user-defined type is the array, and this is really important. So here we are describing a new data type called register file, and it is an array. So array here is a keyword. So it's an array, and the length of the array is array length minus 1 down to 0. So it's an array whose length is array length. But each element in this array consists of a vector of type standard logic vector, and its size is entry size minus 1 down to 0, which is entry size. So here we have described a, uh, uh, a register file, which cons uh, consists of a number of entries uh, whose uh, the number of entries is array length, and each entry is a standard logic vector, a bus of width entry size. 
Arrays are really important because they will be used extensively when we describe memories. You can already sort of see that arrays are going to be useful in memories because they are describing an array of storage locations. Uh, the other kind of uh, user-defined types are actually something called subtypes. And subtypes describe subsets of the types. So they describe maybe uh, a smaller set of a bigger type, a parent type, so that when you declare new signals of this subtype, they can only take that subset. So for example, the subtype short vector is uh, a data type, which is a standard logic vector, but it is of length four. It is only three down to zero. For example, the subtype uh, eight bit int, int is an integer whose value can only lie in the range between zero and 255. And so when you go and describe uh, and declare a new signal, and it's important to understand that when you describe a new data type using the type keyword or the subtype keyword, you're just indicating that this type or subtype exists. You're not describing an instance of a new signal or variable or port that uses this type or subtype. Only when you, when you use this new type or subtype to, to, to declare a new signal, would uh, something actually materialize. So let's say signal A2 is of type uh, short vector, then that signal is automatically recognized to be a standard logic vector of size four. And if you declare a new signal, for example, A3, and it is of type uh, um, 8-bit int, and then you try to assign a value of, let's say, 1,000, or even 256 to this uh, new signal, then you will see an error in either synthesis or simulation because this is out of range of this signal. So when we describe any new syntax or any new uh, uh, facility that uh, VHDL gives us, it's a good practice to think if, it, if this is a, um, a good thing or a bad thing. Is this a good coding practice or is this a bad coding practice. Is this something I should use as much as I can, or is this something I should avoid as much as I can? And so for types, user-defined types and subtypes, um, I would say that these are really good coding practices. You should use user-defined types and subtypes as much as possible. Uh, of course, where it makes sense, I mean, don't overdo it, but if it makes sense to use them, you should go ahead and use them. Uh, and the reason is they don't really affect synthesizability in any way. Uh, the code is going to synthesize perfectly well if you use the subtype or the, uh, the user-defined type or you don't. It's, it's going to give the same result more or less, if not a, bit, a better result. But the thing about user-defined types is that it makes uh, data, it makes code a lot easier to read. So this will become very clear, for example, when we look at state machines, because when you look at state machines and you use a, a, a user-defined enumeration, you can actually look at the code and figure out what the state transitions are just by looking. When, if you had, you know, encoded the, the, the states using binary strings, then that would just be completely unreadable. Subtypes are also useful in a good practice because uh, they force you uh, to recognize the limits on certain uh, data types. And so uh, they impose limits that are checked during compilation and synthesis. Uh, and so they help you actually check that the functionality of the circuit is correct. So I would recommend using user-defined types and subtypes as much as possible where it makes sense.